resources, inspiring interviews, business practices, and practical advice to take your art career to the next level. Join Sergio Gomez in today's Artist Next Level and get ready to take control of your career. Well, hello, my Next Level friend. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Artist Next Level podcast. This is a special edition episode in which I am interviewing artists from around the world as they are stuck at home during the coronavirus lockdown. Today, I have with me artist, art dealer, and consultant all the way from Berlin, Stefan Van Quick, and he is going to share with us a little bit of what he is doing, which he's doing a lot of things uh, and very exciting things in the city of Berlin. Well, Stefan, super happy to have you here. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing very well. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I hope I, uh, I'm able to give a little bit of new ideas to your audience. You know, I know that they, they like this kind of stuff. Yeah, super, man, super. Um, we have been connected through Instagram, which is kind of how we got in touch, uh, I think probably maybe a year ago or something. We've been mm -hmm. following each other. And uh, what I love about the things that you're doing is that we have kind of parallel careers in a way, you know, here in Chicago, you're in, the, in Berlin, but, uh, you know, with both artists and kind of our love for art uh, and not being just satisfied with that, but also love also the business of art and, you know, how art moves in the world. And so you also uh, became an art dealer, uh, have your own space, uh, a consultant, you're working with many artists, and you also have online content, which we're going to talk about, particularly one that I love, which is called Berlin After Dark. <laughs> so we'll talk I, I a little love bit. That one. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it's going to be a really fun conversation, particularly as we are right now, you know, talking with artists from around the world and how we are all adapting to, you know, the reality that we have of uh, the lockdown and, you know, the slow transition to get out of it eventually and how will that look like. So there's a lot of, you know, uncertainty in the art world, a lot of uh, galleries who perhaps might not make it at the end, you know, but what I love about you doing is that you have been doing a lot of things already in social media, in the online world. So it's not new to you. You're not like all of a sudden, like, oh, now switch the online, you know, switch, but actually you have been working uh, and preparing almost for a time such as this. So uh, before we talk a little bit about the business, let me talk uh, about uh What's happening right now in Berlin? How are things looking? You know, how how many weeks have you guys been in, in lockdown? What's the situation? Well, I'll, I personally have been in five weeks of lockdown. Mm. Um, but uh, some people have been a little bit longer. Wow. Uh, it's, we, we can still go out, you know, uh, I still go out running every day. Okay. Uh, and you can go outside for like small walks around with the people you live in. But mm -hmm. they're really advising people to stay at home. Okay. Um, luckily, Berlin uh, has been very not severely hit so far as we know, so it's it's a lucky place. Mm -hmm. I think what's most important is uh, maybe people from the art world know that Berlin is one of the you may say capitals of the right. art world. And what really impressed me was that the, as soon as it was clear that all of this was happening the government jumped uh, in, in favor of freelancers and individual creatives and artists wow. because they were aware that this, 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 these people are very crucial for the identity of Berlin mm -hmm. and that they will not be able to work. So they actually put out a special grant for, for freelance and creatives and artists. Uh, and it was like uh, very surprising for me to to see wow. that one of the first responses was really to help out artists. Well, not that, one of the, the first responses, but right. you know, was among the priority. Right. And that's really exciting because then you can see how you know the value that is given to the arts. Yeah. Um, and not what you might sometimes expect the typical. Well, that's the least thing we need right now, right? But rather uh, giving a voice to that, which for yeah. artists, you know, very hardly hit. But it is, you know, like, yeah, we're in quarantine, you know, but what people are doing now, you know, they're reading more, they're going to museums online, they're watching their favorite band play uh, acoustic sh uh, shows over live stream and Instagram. So, you know, who doesn't need art, you know? Right. You know, exactly. Like exactly. In the middle of all this, you know, 
we have this to connect with the world, right? And yeah. that's what an exciting way. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, how you are doing it with your artists, with your community. You know, what are some of the things that you have been able to do and adapt uh, in this time of uh, transition? Uh, so uh, the first thing is that I had a very cool exhibition uh, organized for four days from now. So okay. I, I was supposed to open an amazing exhibition in four days. It was called 100 Photos. It was photographers from all over the world. We're going to wow. frame 100 pictures on the wall, and you wouldn't be able to see whose photo was who. You would okay. have like a little map to guide you. I mean, it's going to be amazing. Uh, you're going to be able to buy all the works for the same price, so you can get like a super famous photographer right. or a complete amateur. So it was like amazing. Wow. Uh, and we cannot do it because we're in lockdown. It's not, mm -hmm. not, not possible. So I actually decided to move the whole format online. I mm -hmm. am creating finishing touches on a virtual 3D gallery where people will be able to walk and click and move around and get information on the artwork and it opens mm -hmm. and pre-sell all the photographers, that, photos that would be available on the, on the show. You know, you, you buy it, mm -hmm. it's yours, but you get it after the exhibition. You know, so, oh, okay. Gotcha. You know, and and really uh, doing like a Zoom art vernissage, you know, with everybody drinking their wine from home. <laughs> so we're going to go in that direction. It, it's something I never tried, you know, but uh, what better time to try something new than in the middle of a pandemic, I guess. Exactly. And I think this is pushing us all to think in various different ways. We just had in our gallery too, we did a uh, virtual studio tour with one of our artists. You know, again, we know we're, we're all trying to engage the public and uh, invite them just because the physical doors are closed doesn't mean that art is closed, right? Art moves on and continues. And so those are what we do uh, to promote it. So, and where can our friends, uh, if, if they want to go check out the exhibition, where can they go? Uh, you can go to artist.beingpoor.club slash 100 photos, or just uh, hit me up on Instagram and get all the information there directly. Okay, what's your Instagram? We, we will mention it again at the end, but just for our friends who... Uh, Stefan.VanQuick, it's just like my name, which could be a little bit tricky because it's not easy to spell, but, you know. Excellent. So uh, we'll have the link right here on the video. And for those of you guys who are listening to podcasts, I will have it in the notes. So you just check that. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, again, your, your trajectory, you know, as an artist and then, you know, moving into the business of art. Uh, and then something that uh, is very exciting, you know, for you and so what I have seen is the Berlin After Dark. Let me know how you, how you got into Berlin After Dark and how would you describe it? Uh, Berlin After Dark is a TV show. It is a talk show that we created over a year ago with a group of creators from Berlin. Mm -hmm. And we, we interview up and coming creatives, creators, creative people, uh, people from the culture and scene, from event producing. And we, we try and focus on people that are up and coming instead of super established celebrities. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very interesting because our audience is mainly super creative creators. So it is very often that our audience relates very well to our guests. And I think that's something that you cannot really get when you see a super famous person at a super talk show. What do me and that people have in common? Right. You know, but that's different with our show. And, and there's like an actual set that, tell me oh, a little yeah, bit about that. It's, it's a TV show. It's like a real, a film on a TV studio uh, with, with a public television channel from Germany. And um, yeah, we just finished uh, season one uh, last Excellent. year. Uh, we were supposed to launch, to start working on season two this month. Yeah. But so we're thinking a little bit about uh, if we wait or we start doing digital stuff, virtual stuff, or I don't know. Right. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to control myself until this is over. So we're <laughs> doing some, some stuff. Finding new ways. And there's yeah. a, also, there's an Instagram page specifically for Berlin After Dark, correct? Which is just yeah. Berlin After Dark. Berlin After Dark, that, yeah. that one's easier to spell. Uh, how, how often were the episodes? Were one, uh, uh, once every month, uh, every month and a half. Okay. Know? But Super we finished season one, that was six episodes, and we finished it with a live show with an audience. Uh, it was amazing. Very cool, and I, I saw a couple of them, it was very exciting. So tell me also, let's, because you have done, besides this project, which already, uh, are exciting. You also 
um, have a uh, magazine, right? Uh, online yeah. magazine. Tell me a little bit of that. And also, how are you promoting the artists uh, right now? Uh, so I, I started off being an artist, but since uh, I couldn't find exhibitions for myself because uh, the galleries didn't know me, okay. I started curating and organizing my own exhibitions. Uh, yeah. First as an art magazine and then as an art gallery. Uh, a funny thing about this magazine it was that it was a very uh, futuristic concept. Okay. It was like a postcard with a QR code that you could scan and then you would download the magazine. But in 2008, you know, and nobody had a smartphone yet. <laughs> right, right. So, a little too early. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we started creating like a web shop for art and we moved to a gallery space in Buenos Aires. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was amazing. We, we did, I think in Buenos Aires, we did like 30 or 40 art exhibitions. We took part wow. in art fairs. And then five years ago, I moved to Berlin and I kept on, on doing this project um, continuously. There's been 20 more exhibitions here, art fairs exhibited in, in London, Brussels, Madrid, Barcelona. Uh, so it's been really uh, just growing. So I, I, I give an opportunity to, to exhibit um, emerging uh, artists from South America in, in a European market. Mm. But it, it, it has its limitations. I can only work with like 10, other art, 10 artists in that format at a time. Okay, very um, good. And you are promoting right now, I think we were talking about, uh, you are also doing print promotions, right? Yeah. Through... That, yeah. thing that you can send directly to a collector. Exactly. Since as a gallery, it's, you know this, it's very hard to manage much more than 50 or 20 artists if you don't have a huge team. Uh, I created a community called Artists Stop Being Poor, mm -hmm. where we educate and empower artists into mm -hmm. building better artists, market themselves better, promote themselves better. Mm -hmm. And through there, we, we have a shop to sell limited edition prints of these artists' artworks to our collectors worldwide. Mm, right. uh, and then from those artists, we are able to sell limited edition prints. Mm. Uh, so we sell three size prints at the same size for, uh, price for all of them to our collectors around the world. And since it's so cheap or cheaper, it's a very good opening for new collectors to start buying art as well. Right. Well, that's exciting, man. Thank you, Stefan, for sharing all the things that you are doing. Very exciting. We're going to put the links uh, in the episode so our friends can visit all the different things that you do. I want to say congratulations on uh, also uh, helping uh, many artists as they're going through this themselves too with your business and the things that you're doing in the art community, in the art world, you know, to continue fostering the art of others. So uh, tell me where can our friends find you if they want to connect with you on Instagram, website, yeah, I think Instagram is the best for me. Yeah. Uh, it's where I check most of my messages. Uh, or you can go to artist.beingpoor.club to learn some stuff, learn some tricks. Uh, or just visit me at stefan.bunquick.art. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, uh, Stefan, for uh, being here, for sharing this uh, also with uh, our friends, um, wishing you safety as well to you and also your art community. I want to say thank you to everyone for joining us today. Please uh, connect with uh, Stefan and I, share this episode with your friends. It will make us really, really happy. So have a great day. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Stefan. Check out our website at www.theartistnextlevel.com where you will find our podcast library, learn about our upcoming webinars, find resources relevant to your career, and much more. Thanks for listening to today's podcast, and we'll see you at the next level.